Hello everybody, my name is Fort Vlogs and welcome back to another beautiful day and another beautiful recording. Today we're going to be doing a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be doing some Minecraft parkour alongside Reddit stories. Um, I know this isn't what I promised, as in for Death Stranding. I know the recordings have been a little... Oh, not even happening. Um, but for today, um, even though this will be a really off handed post of what I said the actual schedule would be. It's still a video nonetheless. One, because I'm bored, which is disappointing on why I'm making the video, but two, I do want to start making videos again. But with that said, we are going to be reading three okay, I'm gonna be reading three stories from Reddit A I T A. And if you know what it means, you know what it means. If you don't, well Google. Alrighty, with the first story. AITA for cancelling on my 35 female best friend's 36 female's birthday party at the last minute. I, 35 female, have two children, 5 male and 3 female. 5, five year old male and 3 year old female. And a baby who's only 16 weeks old. My first two pregnancies have gone quite smoothly, with a few bumps on the way but not much problems. My third pregnancy was really tough as I got diagnosed with preeclampsia, put to breast, best bed rest for six weeks, had, had an emergency C-section during which both me and the baby almost died. I stayed in the hospital for longer than two weeks before I was deemed healthy enough to be released. My husband has been beside me in the delivery room all three times and does most of the chores and takes care of the kids while I'm a while I recover and make sure I have everything I need. We have saved more than enough money from both our jobs to have the ability to afford to stay home as long as I needed. My best friend, we'll call her Ashley, she's been my BFF since elementary school. We've never missed each other's birthdays no matter what was going on in our lives or how far apart we were. She also was aware of my troubles. Yesterday was her birthday. In the morning, I was feeling below par and I was too tired to get out of bed, so my husband took care of all the kids and helped me shower like he did a hundred times before during pregnancies and postpartum. When it was around 2 p.m., I was feeling a little bit better, but I was still worn out, so I called Ashley. Her birthday was scheduled at 3 p.m. and I was supposed to arrive at 2.30. I waited until 2 p.m. because I knew how important her birthday is and I was hoping that I would feel good enough to come over. I told her that I'm sorry, I'm afraid I won't be able to come to your birthday party because I'm not feeling well. She asked what was wrong and I told her that I was extremely exhausted and there was no way I could be at her party. I literally heard her sigh angrily and said, but what about our promise? I broke my arm while racing and I still traveled 1000 miles for your birthday, but you can't drive 20 miles to see me if your fat butt can reach the grocery store, then you would come here if you actually cared. That's when I became mad and told her, well, if you had kids, then you would understand. And that's when she said, freak you, and hung up. That wasn't the entire conversation. You might think that wasn't so bad about saying if you had kids. Ashley can't get pregnant due to an incident that happened during our younger college days, and the topic is very sensitive for her, so me saying that was extremely vile. This morning I woke up feeling much better and I attempted to contact Ashley so I could apologize, but she wouldn't pick up and ignored all my text messages. My husband said that I shouldn't apologize because if she was a real friend, she would have shown concern and worry instead of anger and the attitude of a brat, so she deserved my comeback. But I feel so guilty for bringing up her inability to have kids and I feel like such a butthole for doing so. AITA? Now well, that is the end of the first story, as much as I butchered it. Ooh, good fun times. Alright, everyone. Aren't I right? AITA for finally telling my mother-in-law that her mac and cheese tastes terrible. My husband, 30 male, and I, 28 female, have been married for two years, together for five and currently six months pregnant. We are very excited and blessed because I've had some complications in getting pregnant. 
I have had a very good relationship with my in-laws, and if any of us ever had a problem, we were able to talk it through, except for one thing. My mother-in-law has her famous mac and cheese that everyone in her family absolutely loves. I, however, find it disgusting on day one. I didn't want to come off as rude and ungrateful, so I pulled through it without saying anything. I told my husband about it, and he said that his mother had been making it for decades, perfecting the recipe, and she would be deeply offended if anyone told her anything bad about her mac and cheese. So should I just find the right moment to tell her? He, for some reason, loves it, so he didn't want to be the one to tell her, which I totally understand because it is my issue and I have to deal with it. It's almost been two years of me pretending. So two days ago, I decided to just tell her. It was a family dinner where my husband's parents had invited us over, of course, and his mother was making her so-called famous mac and cheese. I almost threw up at the smell and I couldn't bear a thought of eating it, probably because I was pregnant. So at the dinner, I was offered a the mac and cheese, I politely declined and said, no, thank you. My mother-in-law looked up and asked why. You should eat. Good for the baby. And I just went right out with it. I'm sorry, but I don't like your mac and cheese. Everything else tastes delicious, but this is just the one thing I simply can't eat anymore. She looked so deeply offended, and she literally snapped. Well, thanks for being honest, and didn't even look or speak to me for the rest of the evening. My husband was on my side and tried to speak to his mother, but all I know is that I did it didn't work because she has been cold to me ever since. What was wrong with the mac and cheese? Her perfecting recipe ended up being the result. Mac and cheese combined with salmon, kimchi, pineapple, seaweed, salad, colored greens, onions, and garlic. I don't have a problem with the greens or onions, but the rest tastes so disgustingly wrong with mac and cheese. However, the reason why I think... I might have been the butthole is because, like my husband said, she's been perfecting this recipe for years. Her entire entire family clearly loves it, and I tell her that her perfect and loved mac and cheese is terrible. AITA? Edit. I did tell her that because I am pregnant, it wasn't possible for me to stomach the ingredients, but she still didn't have, but she didn't want to talk to me. Another edit. I'm French and my husband's family is Korean, so that will explain the ingredients. I do enjoy salmon, kimchi, and seaweed salads, but it greatly depends on which dishes it is served with. And since I've been pregnant, I've been de- I've developed an aversion to several foods that I used to love. As that hits the end of the second story, how is everyone's day? Are you doing fine? Are you eating? Are you drinking? Are you doing the proper things a normal human should be doing? Hmm? Well, if you are, keep on doing so. I have faith in you. AITA for saying my wife will have to quit her job if we get booted from another daycare. My wife and I have a three-year-old daughter, Alexis. Both of us work and Alexis has attended daycare since she was one. In the two years, we have been de- been asked to leave two programs because my wife is a micromanager. I admit both of us went into the first program not really understanding daycare. I quickly learned that they can't provide personalized care and after learning from her teachers, I reset my expectations. My wife, however, has a lot of anxiety and worries about our daughter. She hates when she even gets a little bit upset. She's in therapy and working on it. First program, my wife would constantly watch the live feed and call the daycare multiple times a day. We had several talks about it, and the school talked to us twice. My wife ended up screaming at one of the teachers and then the director. We were terminated immediately. Second daycare was a little bit better because my wife began therapy, but my wife was still so nervous and had a complaint every single day. These were not important things, small things, like she saw another child took a toy from Alexis, and she would cry. The teacher would give the toy back to Alexis, but my wife didn't understand why the other child wasn't punished for it. This daycare didn't kick us out, but we'd eventually suggest that maybe it might not be the best program for us. My wife and I decided to pull Alexis out. My wife, because of her anxiety, myself, because I knew my wife had burned bridges and was becoming one of those moms. 
We chose a smaller home daycare this time as we couldn't afford another center. The woman who owns it is very nice, but also firm. She stands by her boundaries and won't let my wife break any rules, whereas the centers were definitely more accommodating. My wife would take any inch she got. This time she doesn't get the oppor- doesn't get that opportunity. I thought all was well as the owner only speaks to my wife for the most part. Then I get put in a group text saying my wife has been barding the owner with text every single day, despite the owner saying she will text her at lunch when things are settled. She said at this point she will only be responding at specific times of days and not looking the rest. The owner, when added, sent several pages of the contract with passages highlighted, reminding of us certain policies my wife had violated. I was mad. When Alexis went to bed that night, my wife and I talked. I said this was our last option for daycare. The other centers were too expensive, and this was the only home daycare that was in the area that we liked. A nanny was not in our budget. My wife made a million excuses, including that it's not her fault she's anxious. I said, if we were asked to leave this program, too, my wife would be quitting her job to watch Alexis, not me. This upset my wife. I pointed out out i've spoken to her kindly about this plenty of times i've encouraged her to keep up their therapy but she can't get keep getting us kicked out of programs my wife is not speaking to me now aita edit i cannot be the primary contact for the daycare due to not being able to have my phone at work so as that ends a very short short video of about 11 minutes ish we wish you all the best day this has been bullet vlogs peacing out bye bye